On tonight's CTV News, Brooklyn's residents are angry demolition crews are destroying their paradise. Summerfield bus patrons are outraged over a cancelled bus service. And as one theatre falls, another one rises to its former glory. This is CTV News. I'm Grant Mangan. Flooding task force solutions announced today may cost up to $13 million and not be actioned for at least three months. Flood zoned residents should brace themselves for a wet winter ahead as short term council solutions may not be in action for at least three months. The Christchurch City Council Flooding Task Force announced protecting 56 of our most vulnerable homes with short term solutions could cost up to $13.6 million. I think we need to brace ourselves that this is shaping up to be a wet winter. Uh, the, the ground is saturated. It doesn't take much for um, our catchments to activate and start storing water. So, you know, sadly, what we've seen could well be what we're going to get. The multi-million dollar estimate is the result of two weeks looking at what short-term solutions could be used to reduce risk of flooding. Following last week's Cordamenta report revealing the $534 million shortfall, when asked how the council plans to pay for flooding measures to be put in place, the task force replied they'd come up with the solutions and it's the council's decision how to allocate such funds. The urgency of flood affected areas is divided into three sections. Galuli said the task force has identified 56 homes that have flooded twice or more since the earthquakes. These are category one. The price tag for protection will increase to more than 20 million if the council want to put short-term flooding solutions in place for the 451 homes that suffered repeated flooding below floor level. This is Category 2. Another 487 Christchurch homes were inaccessible due to flooding in driveways and streets. This is Category 3. Another 487 Christchurch homes in Category 3 were inaccessible due to flooding in driveways and streets. Christchurch experienced six significant rainfalls since the earthquakes, four of which were this year. Flockton and Dudley Creek was the worst affected area in Christchurch, with 28 homes flooded twice above surface level in homes. The task force are looking at home defence and local area schemes which benefit more than one home in a neighbourhood. Mike Galuli says house defence typically involves raising the house, tanking, the house is waterproofing it just above the level of frequent flooding, and bunding, which is raising mounds or sandbags on properties. None of these solutions prevent flooding, but instead stop residents from soaking in the flood water. City councillors have given the task force until the end of the month to come up with a recommended programme of action for each catchment area. Contractors are causing more damage to streets than the earthquakes, according to Brooklyn's residents. Brooklyn's residents are outraged at damage done by contractors demolishing red zoned homes. Following the earthquakes, most of the semi-rural suburb was red zoned, with a handful of green zone properties and over 20 families who declined the government's buyout offer. The press reports the rebuild workers took no care when working next to properties still being lived in, and some even damaged roads and footpaths by driving metal-footed machinery through Brooklyn's. Fed up residents Gail Sinclair and Jan Burney tried speaking to the contractors and Sarah, but the problems continue. Fed up residents Gail Sinclair and Jan Burney tried speaking to the contractors and Sarah, but the problems continue. Gail Sinclair had enough when she bruised her ribs after falling over a damaged footpath while walking her dog recently. Residents put up signs yesterday reminding the workers and neighbours that Brooklyn's is still a community worth protecting. Bernie says the damage was nothing like this after the earthquakes. She says the people of Brooklyn's don't need to have their rights trodden on. A Sarah spokesman said he could only speak for Sarah contractors, but the authority regularly stressed the need to avoid damage to roads and footpaths. Any damage caused by contractors must be repaired at the contractor's cost. Summerfield residents are outraged over the cancellation of a bus service. Marcus Gibbs reports. Summerfield residents are worried they'll be stranded by the end of the year. Under Environment Canterbury's proposed changes for bus services, Metro's cancelling the 114 bus route. The change comes into effect this December. That means residents like Janet Begg, who rely on public transport, will be struggling to get into town. 
I don't really think they'll be at all happy. The people who want to use the buses need to be able to get to something. They've got a long way to walk to be able to get to anything if, that, if there isn't anything in that area at all. Environment Canterbury is putting the cuts down to a lack of bums on seats. A spokesman says residents have told ECAN the connection point between the Blue Line and the Route 114 at the Princess Margaret Hospital hasn't worked as well as ECAN would have liked. Janet Begg echoes the residents' views. We need to have services that work for the bus users themselves. That's the most important reason for having a public transport system. She represents the bus users group. In February, her peaceful protest outside Barrington Mall attracted the attention of our news camera. The group was after a bus shelter and a place to sit down. This time around, she was excited to see the bus changes proposal. That was until she looked closer. The overall picture looked great when we were shown it. I was really impressed. But then when I looked and saw this great big hole behind Milton Street all the way to the, to the hills practically, I was really nonplussed about that. Her group's holding a public meeting in 12 days' time. Saturday the 24th will see a group of disgruntled bus users come together at St Ninian's Church Hall from 9am. We need to put proposals forward to ECAN to suggest what would work and then nut it together with them. Under the proposed changes, the 115 Murray, Ainsley Sydenham service will also be discontinued. It will be replaced with a new 112 service travelling between Barrington and Eastgate. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Heritage campaigner Ross Gray is no stranger to protesting. He can often be found at any heritage themed demonstration. However, despite his protesting, the Majestic Theatre is almost completely demolished. The Majestic Theatre is no more. This is all that remains of the historic building after demolition crews moved in. This is despite heritage campaigner Ross Gray leading the charge to save the building. The man who ordered the demolition of the historic building claims a restoration could have cost more than $18 million. Demolition, on the other hand, was by far the cheapest option. Central Development Unit Director Warwick Isaacs has written to the council rejecting the council's belief that the planned widening of Manchester Street was the reason for his decision. Demolition first started at the end of March and in his letter to the council Warwick Isaacs stated he could not halt the demolition. The Majestic was built in the early 1930s and it was Christchurch's first steel frame building. The Save the Majestic group are very disappointed with the decision to continue with demolition. Group leader Ross Gray also tried to save Cranmer Court, but to no avail. As one theatre falls, another one rises back up. The Isaac Theatre Royals restoration will take the building's exterior back to its original look from the early 1900s. Restoration of Christchurch's historic Isaac Theatre Royal will use the same bricks and original look that it was built with in 1907. During its restoration, Theatre Chief Executive Neil Cox says very distinct red ochre bricks were found underneath six layers of paint. Neil Cox says the paint stripping process found there were thick coats of paint from different areas of the theatre's life. The most recent coat painted in the 1980s was a drab brown colour. Neil Cox says one layer of paint was green, which they're hoping was an undercoat. The idea to leave the historic theatre unpainted removes the need to repaint it every five years and prevents any expensive moisture problems. Removing the paint without damaging the bricks takes a considerable amount of time. Neil Cox has excited the restoration of this theatre back to its original condition, allows contemporaries to experience a bit of Christchurch history. The Isaac Royal Theatre is due to reopen between mid-October and early November of this year. Oxford area residents have the chance to shape the future of their town centre. The monthly Wamakareri District Council meeting approved the draft Oxford Town Centre strategy for public consultation. The population of Oxford has risen by 20% since 2006. Changes to the town include a number of new commercial developments, either completed or underway. A community survey completed in 2013 showed residents wanted to retain the overall character and feel of the town centre, but there were some concerns about traffic congestion, road safety and parking. Well, coming up, Eastern Christchurch is being reconnected one bridge at a time.
I'm Chris Lynch. Join me for CDV's new current affairs show, Lynched, every Monday at 8.30 right here on CDV, where I talk to the decision makers and those responsible for running our city. Come dine with Country Catering at the Kaipoi Golf Club Cafe. Enjoy our range of delicious $10 lunches, daily specials and other homemade goodies. Open to the public seven days inside the Kaipoi Golf Club. North end of William Street, Kaipoi. We look forward to seeing you soon. Ready to go, mate? Flight leaves at 4.30. Relax, mate. We'll park at Airpark Canterbury. Airpark Canterbury, privately owned and operated with a free 24-7 shuttle service. Call 0800 Airpark or book online at airparkcanterbury.co.nz. Yuck, look at all this moss and lichen. I'm not getting up there, not in these heels. Time to call Moss Buster. Moss Buster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. You can buy Moss Buster online for less than half the cost of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest. Or Moss Buster can do it for you. Check out our website or call the Moss Buster crew for a free quote. Moss Buster, 0800 88 1000. With so many car fans in the region, Canterbury Christian Funeral Service have been asked very often if they had an enthusiast hearse. So, they bought one. The Ford Galaxy is a custom-built hearse for those who want their last journey to be a memorable one. Complete with racing motor and exhausts, the vehicle certainly stands out and if you want to go out in something that's very different or you want your loved one to have their last journey very special, contact the team at Canterbury Christian Funeral Services. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice see More Mobility corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference more mobility makes. Hi, Rob Coat Williams. Join me with Rob's Country every Friday at 7.30 in the evening when I take you out of town and talk about anything this country. Rob's Country, Friday at 7.30. The latest exhibition at Cattery Museum provides a glimpse of what happened inside the city when the earthquake closed it down. Compelling images taken beyond the cordon. This exhibition documenting one of the largest emergency response operations ever seen in New Zealand. It's a very, very powerful, powerful set of images we've got. Jeff Burns was part of the police's disaster victim identification team tasked with the job of taking photos of those who lost their lives in the February earthquake, all 185 of them. This photograph taken of the collapsed PGC building is one of his own, taken just three days after the disaster. It's like I'm, I'm actually still sitting in the helicopter looking out, taking the image. Uh, it's, uh, I guess I'm sort of living it over and over again, um, but looking at, looking at this image, I'm seeing sort of detail and uh, things that I haven't actually ever noticed before. So I sort of look at it again, see something else, look at it again and see something else again. Many of the photos showing a rare glimpse of the danger rescuers were put through following the quake. With search and rescue missions being completed in buildings where collapsed stairwells were being secured by chains. Remembering that while this was occurring, uh, there were still aftershocks rumbling through the city and it was, it was particularly, uh, particularly unnerving. But the scale of the disaster was something the team of 10 local photographers had never come across before. We would, we would take images under these circumstances, we'd put, take the camera down and we'd look around and everywhere we turned was just destruction and then we would go back to our office, destruction, we would go home, destruction. The photographers were facing smouldering rubble burning their boots, Shards of concrete flying as rubble was cleared and the threat of buildings collapsing in an aftershock as they were making their way through the city. It was, um, it was a really sort of emotionally draining time but 
I, I guess we were also in a very privileged position to be able to do what we were doing, very focused on what we were trying to do. It's all about returning loved ones back to their families. That's your absolute primary goal. The three-month exhibition gives locals and tourists a chance to take in what happened when the city was locked down. Um, it's, it's been very well received by the public, both locals, who some of whom are a little bit um, emotional about coming in and, and confronting it, but very grateful for the opportunity. Bringing back their own memories of February 22nd. That's one you'd rather forget, but uh, some fantastic shots here. Yeah. The photos are just a selection of the hundreds already featured in the Beyond the Cordon book. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Construction has begun on a temporary footbridge, bringing Eastern Christchurch one step closer to safer roads. The earthquakes damaged this bridge. Soon it will be demolished. Now work starting on a temporary bridge to be built in its place. Gayhurst Bridge separated from the road during the earthquakes. While filming, it was obvious why the bridge needed to be replaced. Cars going too fast flew over the edge. To make things safer, a footbridge and cycleway are being built. Many of the city's eastern bridges were also damaged during the earthquakes and will need to be repaired. However, skirts say the work can't take place at the same time as other projects as traffic flows need to be considered when closing roads. So this, this bridge is actually really badly damaged so it needs to be demolished and a new, new bridge built in its place. Before we can actually demolish the bridge, we're going to be building a, a, a temporary structure to enable cyclists and pedestrians to get across the river uh, so the local traffic can still keep going through. McConnell and Dow site engineer Tom Angus says the earthquake damage altered the northern side of the bridge, raising it by more than five degrees because of the excess liquefaction. The pressure from the bridge moved into the centre of the structure, meaning it has the potential to collapse if engineers try to move the bridge. What we think that's done is it's actually put the centre of the bridge uh, under compression, which is loading inwards. When we go to uh, deconstruct those middle, that middle span, uh, we don't know. It may collapse. Duncan Gibbs says even with the repairs to Christchurch's roads, most of the surfaces won't be perfectly smooth, as safety is the main concern. There is not a plan to have all the roads perfect. We, we just don't have the funding available to rebuild the entire road network in Christchurch. It's not going to happen. So the reality is we are reinstating the sort of whole of network level of service to that which existed pre-September. Duncan Gibbs says Skirt are reinstating the roading system to what existed before September 2010. Some of the roads will be completely replaced, others still in a reasonable condition will be patched over. During the bridge's demolition, Skirt are warning drivers to prepare for delays and congestion. So we'll be shutting the road just behind us um, and, and that'll become a T intersection up there at Gayhurst. Uh, so you're going to need to plan your routes, I understand where you're going and find the best way to get across another bridge to where you want to go. The demolition of this Gayhurst bridge starts next month. Joel Batista, CTV News. Coming up, the weekend sports roundup, traffic report and weather forecast complete with new music. Flash News 7 at Red and Black Sport gets a new title as well, but we'll still be talking every week to the movers and shakers in sport. Red and Black Sport, Monday night, 7.30, here on CTV. Christchurch has its very own enchanted utopia. The Hitching Post, pop in and see for yourself. A magical assortment of handmade creations, custom-made candles and artwork. Choose from our huge range of water features, garden art and imported giftware. Specialists in handcrafted metal artwork made in store. Nestled on 722 Marshlands Road. The Hitching Post, defining art our way. Our new companion package is a personalised service for those that need extra help and support. A cost-effective solution for someone who needs more than just a taxi driver. Our drivers are handpicked from our experienced team and specialise in providing the right support and companionship. Home safe every time with Blue Star Taxis. Hi, 
I'm Mark and welcome to Stay Well Pharmacy. Whatever the season, Stay Well Pharmacy has you covered. As an integrated pharmacy, we stock all the well-known pharmacy medicines as well as quality nutritional and herbal treatments. Our team of pharmacists and full-time naturopath are here to help you find the products and advice to suit the needs of you and your family. So come in and see us at Stay Well Pharmacy, 27 Shands Road in Hornby. Stay Well Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Yuck, look at all this moss and lichen. I'm not getting up there, not in these heels. Time to call Mossbuster. Mossbuster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. You can buy Mossbuster online for less than half the cost of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest, or Mossbuster can do it for you. Check out our website or call the Mossbuster crew for a free quote. Mossbuster, 0800 88 1000. Be immersed in the unique cultural highlights Germany has to offer every Tuesday night with Discover Germany. Tuesday at 7pm, right here on CTV. Here's Gordon Finlater with all the weekend's sporting action. The Crusaders grabbed their first win at Suncorp Stadium since 2008 in sensational style last night when they downed the Reds in a try-scoring fest, 57 points to 29. Other than a period in the first half when the Crusaders were reduced to 14 men after Andy Ellis was sinbin, the Cantabs looked in complete control of the match. Narrowly trailing 17-16 at half-time, the Crusaders put the match to bed early in the second half when they notched 34 unanswered points in quick succession. The bonus point win puts the Crusaders fourth on the competition ladder and with the Chiefs, Hurricanes and Highlanders all grabbing wins over the weekend, the race for the New Zealand Conference is set to go down to the wire. Still with rugby and the weekend's Hawken Cup action has seen Lincoln University and New Brighton maintain their dominance at the top of the leaderboard with wins, while six teams are now fighting for the final four spots in the top six of the competition. Christchurch moved into the top six when they defeated previously unbeaten Burnside 30-17. Marist gave Linwood's hopes of a top six finish a blow when they beat them 28-0, while Sumner and Sydenham are both in the mix after victories in round six. The Canterbury Rams are still searching for their first win at Cal Stadium this season when they went down 76-59 to the Hawks Bay Hawks. The Rams struck a horror patch in the first half, allowing the Hawks to go on a 23-point run from which the Rams couldn't recover. The only bright point on Friday night came when 16-year-old Burnside High School student Xiao Nusbet entered the game to become one of the youngest players to make his NBL debut. The teenager played just 10 minutes and although he didn't register any points, he didn't look out of his depth. To football now, and the first round of the Chatham Cup took place over the weekend, with defending champs Kashmir Technical escaping a scare to eventually win their match against Ferrymead Bays after a penalty shootout was needed to settle the tie. The biggest upset went to Burwitt, who defeated Division I side Wymac United, while other local games saw Canterbury University defeat Christchurch United 2-1, Hallswall thumped Parklands 5-0, Nomads got the win over Salwyn 4-2, while Coastal Spirit defeated Weston 2-1. To Rugby League, where the Hallswall Hornets have moved into top spot in the Canterbury Rugby League Premiership after defeating fellow competition frontrunners the Celebration Lions at Hallswall Domain on Saturday. The Hornets came back after trailing by 18 at the halftime break to run out eventual winners 35-32. Defending champions Hornby are in third after they defeated Papua Nui 14-12. And finally tonight, the mainland tactics horror season continued last night when they lost 58-50 to the Central Pulse in Nelson. Down by three at half-time, the tactics were still in with the hunt until the Pulse's class shone through in the second half of the match. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. 
I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. If you're driving around the central city, CTV's traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place. Hello travellers, to help you plan your journey around the central city, here's an update on what's happening on our city roads this week. Southbound routes across the city remain busy. Durham Street and Barbados Street are down to one lane in places which will slow down the drive to and from work. Tulum Street continues to be closed from Colombo Street to Manchester Street while building demolition takes place. St Asaph Street is reduced to one lane from Fitzgerald Avenue to Madras Street which will slow traffic in the peak hours. Remember, the four avenues are the best ways around the city if you're not going into it. Or use Fitzgerald Avenue South to access the west routes across the city. To keep up to date on what's happening on the central city roads, stay tuned, and in the meantime, visit the website, Transport for Christchurch. It's the start of a new week, and that means new weather music. This week's selection is Swing Star Part 1 from the CD. It's album time with Todd Tarje. Take it away, maestro. Here's your regional weather. Kia ora, everyone. Let's take a look at today's estimated temperatures. Down in South Canterbury, Timaru had 15 degrees today. Tamuka and Geraldine on 15 degrees. Ashburton, 15 degrees for your Monday. Methven had 15 degrees. Rakaia, 15 degrees for you. Darfield had 15 degrees today. Leeston and Rolleston had 15 degrees. Lincoln also on 15 degrees. Christchurch, a moderate day for you with 15 degrees. Akarawa on 15 degrees today. And north of the Waimak, Kaipoi, Rangiora and Amberley all receiving 15 degrees today. In the spring, slightly warmer on 16 degrees and 16 for Cheviot as well. Further up along the east coast, warmer still in Kaikoura with 17 degrees today. Timaru, cloudy with rain developing during the morning with light southwesterly winds. Tonight's low 8 degrees, tomorrow's high 13. Burton, a cloudy, dull and damp Tuesday is in store with rain developing around the middle of the day with light winds. Tonight's low 8 degrees, tomorrow's high 13. A dry but cloudy Tuesday morning ahead for Christchurch, followed by cooler southwesterlies and rain will develop during the afternoon. Tonight's low 7 degrees, tomorrow's high 14 degrees. Dry at first in Kaikoura with cloud increasing but rain developing during the afternoon with cooler southwesterly winds. Tonight's overnight low 7 degrees, tomorrow's high 14 degrees. A cloudy rainy day ahead for other areas tomorrow with some cloud about. Let's take a look at the temperatures. Tamuka and Geraldine can expect 13 degrees, Methven 13 and 13 degrees in Rakaia. Darfield, you can expect 13 degrees tomorrow and least in 13 degrees for you. Rolleston and Lincoln, 13 degrees for you as well, and Akadawa, 13 degrees expected for you. And out in North Canterbury, Kaipui and Rangiora a tad warmer with 14 degrees for Tuesday. Amberley also have 14 expected out there. and Hammer Springs and Cheviot, a cloudy day ahead with 14 degrees. Looking ahead for Canterbury, showers clearing on Wednesday with skies cloudy at first but some sunny periods developing later on with moderate southwesterly winds and frost possible Wednesday night. Fine and sunny on Thursday and Friday with scattered higher cloud and light to moderate northeasterly winds. Much milder on Saturday with sunny periods at first but high cloud increasing during the day and moderate northwesterly winds developing. Fresh gusty northeasterlies on Sunday with high cloud and mild temperatures. And that's your weather update for Monday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And that's CTV News. I'm Grant Mangan. Good night.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.